Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I just got out of uh, Dark Phoenix, and my heart is pounding. Um, it has nothing to do with the movie, which was a complete, oh, it was a complete chore to sit through thing. But uh, I got two emails from my lawyers, I'm in a lawsuit with Mark Wade, and the first one was like very, very dense lawyer talk, which I completely misunderstood, and uh, then uh, they sent an email like three minutes later, they go, you probably sound, think that sounds bad, but uh, things are actually going really good. It's like, ah, 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 ah. Uh, so, uh, I, I don't know, I guess I'll just do it right now. So, um, uh, uh, actually, no, I, I'm sure Nick Riccati will probably cover this in a, in a video. I'll probably, I'm still, I still got that adrenaline going, so I'll probably say something dumb or misinterpret something or something like that. Um, but, uh, so I just got out of Dark Phoenix. <laughs> wow, I'm so energized. Uh, you know, not by, uh, Dark Phoenix. And I gotta say, Dark Phoenix was, so, I uh, got a video tomorrow, uh, should be tomorrow. It's gonna be kind of like a pretty big, interesting video. And, you know, it's about, you know, comic book pros who their entire focus and they will do everything, even if it's the detriment to the companies they work with or the stores their books are sold in. Every single thing the focus is, I want to be in the movies, I want to be in TV. And I just watched a movie made by people who all work in movies, and I feel like they just would rather just be like, I don't know, lawn care? I don't know. You know, just fix things? I don't know, maybe I'm like a tour guide? Like, I, it, it was the most anemic, bloodless, unhappy, just bored. You know, a movie can be boring because it's not well made, but you would think, is, wouldn't it be cool to be an actor or, you know, be a stuntman or be a director? It's like, apparently it's not. <laughs> apparently it's just like, I don't know, working in a coal mine in the 1800s. It's just like this tedious, low paying job that you just, yeah, you're just trying to put potatoes on the table. Uh, uh, so, um, Dark Phoenix, which is not, not titled X-Men Dark Phoenix. It's just titled Dark Phoenix, which I think is fine. Um, oh my gosh. Now, I, I was so bored, uh, a couple things started happening. Number one, I kept spacing out. Not for entire scenes, I and mean, I gotta do my due diligence. I used to watch uh, Comic Book Girl 19 when she used to do movie reviews, and she did something one time where I just like, Actually, I kind of, I don't know, lost respect for her. She's like, uh, oh, I took edibles and then I, I, I got nauseous and I went to the bathroom and vomited. And then I just kind of chilled on the couch. And then eventually I went back in to the movie. I was like, well, that's fine, but you kind of lost your right to review the movie after all of that happened. Um, so when I say spaced out, I don't want to imply that I spaced out for entire scenes or even kind of, you know, a significant part of any single scene. I'm talking about in like a fight scene, somebody would be getting thrown by someone else and I would say, I don't remember them being grabbed by that person or that person being right up on them. But you know, it's an, it's an X-Man movie. People can teleport, people can move super fast. So maybe one of those two things happened. So anyway, uh, Dark Phoenix is weirdly enough, the X movies repeating the Dark Phoenix story and actually doing it worse this time. Yes, I know. X3, The Last Stand, is supposedly the worst one, but it's, I actually like it. Yeah, I know everyone's like, I can't take your, I can't take you seriously. I will, I'll, so I will explain why I like it. Um, uh, 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 Hugh Jackman was in awesome shape. Uh, uh, Famke Jansen is beautiful. Um, people kind of look cool, and I like the action, and I actually thought, you know, like the scenes, like when Xavier was uh, killed, were done well. Yeah, I know there's dopey things in there, um, but that's what, that's what I liked. Um, I, one of the things about this movie is, oh my gosh, it just proves how much Hugh Jackman carried, like, this entire franchise. What are they at, like, ten movies right now? Although the last one he was in was, which is, was, he was... Was he in the last one at all? What was the one where they showed him at the Weapon X facility? It was the one where I remember where he's dressed like, you know, in the Weapon X, you know, like from Barry Windsor Smith. And at one point he's leaving the facility and he has to go run out into the snow, you know, the forest. And uh, they hold the shot like ridiculously long because, you know, it's like, oh, it's Hugh Jackman. It's the only person that, you know, actually has star power. So let's watch it walk. Uh, watch him 
like run out into the forest but you can tell it's a set it's not the best set in the world and also the set only goes back like 50 feet so he has to slow down his running as he gets farther back so at the, at, <laughs> at the end he's basically like pretending to run but just kind of just shuffling and I was like oh this is so awkward so I was that two movies back or was that in the last one I would have sworn he was in the last one at least for a couple minutes but maybe he wasn't but the last one was um the one with uh, Apocalypse that was just awful. Like, th their version of Apocalypse was awful. I think there was a good couple of good scenes. Olivia Munn looked fantastic as Psylocke, and then they did nothing with her. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the kind of sad thing is, uh, supposedly, Olivia Munn was um, offered the role. Uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the name. The girlfriend role from uh, Deadpool. And she would have been in that franchise, but she's like, well, I want to be a hero, not just a girlfriend. And it's like, eh, how did that work out for you? Uh, that subverted expectations. Um, but, uh, yeah, so not really that good. Um, uh, oh, wait. Which, which thing am I saying is not that good? The last X-Men movie, uh, scenes from the one before that, or maybe the last one? Okay, so get back onto Dark Phoenix. So they're telling Dark Phoenix, and they're doing the whole, it's like, we're going to tell it right this time. Um, and, oh, my gosh, they did not. Oh, wow, wow. So uh, it's uh, 1995. The um, uh, Jean Grey and Cyclops, I think they're supposed to be, like, 28 or so. And uh, the X-Men are kind of, like they're accepted by humanity there's a uh, space shuttle uh, mission that's gone awry or alri as i say it in my head um, but i just realized that's wrong awry it went awry uh and uh so they go up there now um uh jennifer lawrence who absolutely hates being in x-men movies she's been very very open about that oh i forgot spoilers don't go see it spoilers the rest of it's going to be a bunch of spoilers. So she's in the beginning, and she's just angry. And yes, she does the line, you know, oh, you should call this the ex-women. And it's kind of cringy, but it's not that bad because the, the, the dialogue before and the scene before kind of sets up why she says that. So it's not, you just kind of eye roll. It's not even like a full eye roll if you go see it. It's like half of an eye roll. Um, but uh, she she gets killed off pretty soon. Like maybe like... I don't know, 20, 30 minutes into the movie. And actually, the, the, the space shuttle rescue scene is done pretty well. But she's, like, super angry. And so Jennifer Lawrence has basically said she hates being in these movies. She It was kind of her big break, but she signed some, you know, contract when she was, like, 19. She just has to do, like, infinite sequels, I think. Uh, so she's always very sour. That's why in, like, the last two movies she's been in, she's in her, like, Jennifer Lawrence mode almost all the time because she hates the makeup and then she was in the makeup a lot I was like oh that's weird she's in the makeup a lot and then I was like then the death scene was like oh that's why she's like I'm only doing your stupid freaking movie I'm only gonna do three scenes and they're like ha 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 gotcha bitch you're gonna be in freaking makeup for all of them um uh so she does die and you know in you know the 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 blue skin by the way Mystique Nightcrawler and Beast are all blue and they shouldn't be they should all be black because blue is simply old school comics like the simple coloring blue was code for black because uh, obviously the drawing was in the black of the ink so if you look at all the old Superman you know they would you know draw his hair in uh, uh, black ink but then the shiny part would be blue but that was code so I was like why is everyone blue and they're like they're really blue they're like crayon blue so you're like ah uh. It looks dumb. Uh, so she gets off really easy. You know, she was so happy. Um, uh, and then uh, Sophie Turner gets the... One of the things I kept doing is I kept, like, rewriting the title in uh, in my mind. And at first it was like, this is plainly good. And then, so then it was like, this is a sci-fi original movie. And it was like, oh, this is just tedious. This is just a tedious mess. So... Uh, there's a bunch of uh, shill media pieces saying this is just a freaking disaster, but I guess the audience uh, rating is better. I think the audience rating is like 50%, which I don't know. I don't know why Red Lightning Media said 50% is good. It's not. It's not good. Um, uh, 
they do this sometimes. You know, something will get a really bad critic score, like 25%, but then like 70, 80% of the audience likes it. That's that's the audience actually liking, like 45 to 55%. No, that's, no. So the way I was saying in my head, it's like, if someone said they hated this movie, I would absolutely agree. If someone just had a neutral or bored expression, I would, I would understand that. If someone said they loved it, I would just be confused. Like, I wouldn't argue. Uh, I would just be confused. I go, what? Hard did you like? I mean, yeah, the, the 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 shuttle rescue was good. The other thing is that, so I guess this movie flopped because it only made like 120 million worldwide. I think they they'll still at least break even, but I did not see the 120 million dollars on the screen, unless they had to, you know. Uh, unless the haha bitch wasn't to Jennifer Lawrence, but it was from Jennifer Lawrence. They're like, Hugh Jackman is retired from these movies. We really need some star power. And then uh, Jennifer Lawrence is like, I'll do it. And they're like, oh, we thought you hated the X-Men movie. She's like, yeah, give me like $30 million. She's like, they're like, get sad. She's like, got you, bitch. Um, but um, Michael Fassbender was in there. It's just oh, Everyone just looks bored and sad. Sophie Turner is okay. She really doesn't have star power. She's not a lead uh, the roles of Jean Grey and Cyclops, these are leads. You need to cast actors who can be leads. Yes, I know, technically she's a lead here. She doesn't have that star quality. Like, when they cast that kid as, uh, you know, the second version of Cyclops, I was like, this is just, like, a guy. This is someone you would cast as a minor character, like Pyro or Iceman. If you're going to cast Cyclops, you need to cast a leading man type, like James Marsden. So... Uh, and also, like, the guy, they, the, the, the kid they cast as, the, you know, the new Cyclops, he looks, like, just like this one guy in the Marines who I hated, so it always makes me think about him. Um, uh, I actually busted him down, and we made a, uh, we made it, we made a fake billet. A billet is, like, your job description. We made a fake billet lower than the lowest actual billet. Uh, I gave him the job. He went from team leader to assistant ammo man. Assistant Ammo Man is not a real... That it doesn't exist. Um, uh, but, um... Uh, what can I say? This... Like, I don't know where they spent this movie. Like, there's a couple scenes that look expensive. Uh, but then there's a scene where, like, the X-Men confront uh, Jean Grey. And it's just, like, in a regular neighborhood, which is fine. But the X-Men just kind of, like, walk in from off screen. And their, their uniforms look cheap. And the shot... It's just, like, something out of an episode of Smallville. You're like what this is it um so oh i forgot about the aliens so am i dumb or just too hopeful when i saw january jones and i saw what she looked like and i saw what she was wearing she was wearing white she got the blonde hair i don't know if they dyed her eyebrows or her eyebrows just fell out she seems to have no eyebrows and then she was like advising uh jean uh, when, you know, the Phoenix power was taken over in the, in the trailer. And then, you know, I, I, uh, she seemed to have Jean and Sorcel. I'm like, oh, is this the White Queen? I got really, really excited. Is this the White Queen? No. It's literally just some rich guy's wife that just happens to be near where some aliens land. And these aliens who can apparently do everything take over her body instead of just copying her looks. Or I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, so they do have, like, a cosmic element. They do have aliens, but, like, they're, like, sci-fi original TV show, like, low-budget TV show aliens. They're just people in regular clothes who seem to have not much powers until the end when they're, like, so indestructible you could shoot them, like, freaking with 50 machine guns at the same time, and it just does nothing besides slightly slow them down. Um... It did kind of remind me of, like, the Master of Vampires from that movie Vampires with James Wood, which I'm going to review on my other channel uh, later tonight. But uh, overall, just, like, no, just boring. There's actually one part where, you know, so the ending is just basically, like, I want the power. Uh, oh, no, you've got to fight her. Be strong. Believe in the power of love. And then, like, okay, I believe in the power of love. Ah, ha, ha. So at one point, it looks like it's going to happen in this kind of, like, pseudo hellfire club. And then I was like, oh, I'm so excited. And then a bunch of just, like, regular 1990s soldiers with regular guns come in. And they, they, like, get everyone around the neck with a, a, the collar that takes away their powers. And then everyone's on a train. And you're like, oh, 
So now we gotta have the big special effects extravaganza. It's gonna be like 20 more minutes. I thought it was done. Oh, that was one of the other things I liked about um, X3 The Last Stand. So one of the reasons that was supposed to be the last movie is they kept having to add more and more mutants and add more and more effect scenes. If you remember the first movie, it was low budget and there wasn't a lot of effects in it. So they go, we can't afford these. Like it's, they're so expensive now. So they go, okay, let's just wrap it up. Um, and we'll just do like simple, like there was going to be a Magneto solo, you know, movie that never happened. Um, but that movie X3, because of, you know, the budget and how many mutants there were and how many special effects, it was short, man. It's like 88 minutes. Like if you go, if you went, if you saw a a day, you know, you saw a matinee version, like the sun was almost in the same point in the sky when you came out. Um, I actually really, really like short movies. I love short movies. Hour and a half is like fine for me. So I remember it was like, oh, it's just a bunch of special effects and you know, uh, uh, Hugh Jackman is like in the best shape he was ever in. Famke Jensen looked really hot and uh, oh, it's over. Okay, cool, cool. All right, cool. Um, I wouldn't call this movie trash. I would just call it what it is in the title, a tedious mess. Oh, so, so this is Simon Kinberg, who um, uh, he's been, you know, I actually thought his career was longer. I think I confused him with someone else. So I guess he first wrote on uh, X2 and X3. He's done good movies. He's done like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. This is his first time directing. Oh my gosh. This guy is so bland, and he's written other things that with you know better directors that were better, even if they had some bad plot elements, which I'm pro I'm guessing are probably the director. Um, no, man, no, no. You need to go back behind uh, the the camera. Like you're no, no. You are so boring as a director. And when you got to be the director, so you got to do all your boring story ideas. Like no, no. I would not recommend this seen this movie uh in theaters i don't even recommend seeing it like when it's on fx network in like four and a half months like it was a chore i was so happy I, and uh, I, I went to one of those nicer theaters you know alamo draft house so like uh, you know, everyone's like very, you know, it's all about like good service. So someone like, as soon as the movie opens, someone opens it and they're kind of like smiling. And I came out, I wasn't like mad dogging her, but she just gave me this face like, yeah, we've gotten that face a lot. We have other movies. You can order food at your seat. It's kind of fun. Um, uh, but oh no, no, avoid this movie at all costs. Don't get it on Netflix, or Amazon Prime Video. Don't get it on DVD. No, don't. Just, just, just don't watch it ever. Just, oh my gosh. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you still subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone. Give them to the GoFundMe for the lawsuit. I'm guessing Nick Riccata is probably going to cover the updates um, uh, this week. Uh, as far they, they have this thing called PacerNet. So when you file your stuff, like it almost immediately goes onto PacerNet. So like any lawyer with a, like a thirty dollar a month subscription can like read it and I think a couple days later it's like anyone can read it so I'm sure he'll he'll be doing that I'm gonna kind of be smart and not talk about things I don't really understand it. oh so one of the things about this trial is now that we're getting into like things accelerating it's really really like lawyer stuff that even when they explain it to you you just kind of go I get it I get it I don't get it and they just go it's good things are going good and I'm like okay I understand I understand good I understand good I, I know that word I'll learn that in preschool I know what good means. So anyway, uh, thanks. And I'll have, uh, uh, oh, I'm going to be driving. So this is my last video today. Oh, except for on the other channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.